Well, good morning and welcome to um, the AGM of the ASSC. Welcome to Avi Moore and, and the McDonald Centre. Especially new members today who've, who, who are coming for the first time. Uh, there are over 150 of us today, including the exhibitors, which is probably something of a record. So thank you very much for coming. Um, today, we've got a full action-packed program. We're having the AGM just now. There'll be a comfort break after that, and then we will hear from Visit Scotland and Wild Scotland before lunch, and there will be a, a discussion session around that. After lunch, we will hear from Muriel Gray, and there'll be a session on social media and an expert forum to finish up the day. Okay, we come to Chairman's report. Um, as, as ever, uh, a Chairman's report's been circulated to members, so what I've got to say today is perhaps illustrating some of the points. 2012 has been an enormous year for the UK. We had the Queen's Jubilee, uh, there's, a, there's a barge there, and that's a, in case you think never happened in Scotland, that's a, that's a street party from Edinburgh. Um, the Olympics, of course, there's the Olympic rings in Edinburgh, there's the torch relay on St Andrew's Beach, and there's Sir Chris Hoy winning a, winning a medal. Um, we were a bit uh, uh, nervous, I suppose, about the, the torch relay and a bit cynical about it, but in fact it was one of the big successes and it's allowed local, local heroes to shine in their, in, in their own areas and be celebrated. So it actually turned out a very good thing and it touched Scotland. Iconic images flashed around the world about the UK being interesting and different. Um, the opening ceremony at the Olympics, I, I don't know how many people didn't watch it, but probably most people have seen some of it. Uh, the Olympic rings, the, 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 the people with the umbrellas, uh, sorry, with the people with, with the bicycles and, 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 um, uh, and wings. Also, the Cultural Olympiad, right across Britain, but started off here in Scotland. That's Gustavo Dudamel conducting the, uh, his, his orchestra from Venezuela, that, and also with the Elsa Steamer pupils of Raplock and Sterling. Anyone that was there, it absolutely chucked it down, but it was a, it was a great night, and it was the start of, of the Scottish start to the, the, the Olympiad. The Speed of Light was quite an interesting event as well. This was people in light suits running all, all over Arthur's Seat at the Edinburgh Festival. Um, and that's, th that's an event that can now roll out worldwide. They've discovered how to, how to do these outdoor things, made in Scotland. And there we go, big year for the UK, iconic images. Everybody thought London had a flat cauldron, it was going to be different, and then the things all rose up in the air. Quite a moment, and something that you know, the, the world will remember Britain for, and I'm sure there will be a legacy fr from all these images. We've all got our favourites over the summer. And in Scotland, well, it wasn't a great summer, was it? Well, it was actually not bad if you lived in the northwest. And unfortunately, if it rains in London and it rains in Glasgow and it rains in Edinburgh, it's raining all over the UK. In the Northwest, uh, distilleries were shutting, people were running short of water, people were wandering around with Mediterranean tans. It was, a, it was a wonderful summer, and it's a shame in a way that uh, we didn't get to hear about it. Um, farming, yes, it's been difficult. A lot of people standing around the brollies. That's the cancelled events. I think almost everybody here will have come across a cancelled event sometime in the, in the summer. And that's bad news for, bad news for um, economies, bad news for tourism. That's the first day of the game fair in Perth. Uh, first day went ahead, the second and third days were cancelled. So, you know, big, big, um, big changes in the economy. The uh, self-catering figures, 2011, 42% across the board, which is down from where it was in 2010. They're counting them slightly differently. Stats you've always got to be very careful about, but I think to, the, the, point, the point to make is there's a big variation within that figure. City, 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 um, city self-catering, 60% occupancy. Seaside's not performing well at 38. Five star, 65%. And there's, a, there's, a, there's absolutely a graduated scale right down to unstarred at 37. Do you take part in this survey? Because you can. It's occupancy survey. If you take part, you get benchmarked figures for yourself and your area. And um, it's very easy. Go to visitscotland.com and uh, follow, the, follow the links for occupancy. You put in your occupancy every month, and it's, 
it, it's, it's easy to do. Self catering is actually quite a difficult occupation to benchmark yourself against. So if you know how you're doing in the area, how you're doing against Scotland, that's actually quite a, quite a useful tool. So far this year, on the first six months, January to June, we're down slightly 1%. Bed and breakfast up slightly, hotels up slightly, caravans touring down slightly. Service departments have been taken out of self-catering and put into hotels, so there's a bit of fiddling with the figures going on, so take it with a pinch of salt. I think um, more than ever we're having to innovate to stand still. I, I think the best of us have, you know, we've got nice websites, we've got online booking, we're, we're talking to our visitors. What do you actually do next to stay ahead of the game? Because more and more people are, are, are doing this and to, to, to try and work out the next thing to stay ahead of the game is actually quite a challenge. Um, the skill set is changing as ever. It's, um, marketing is different. Online booking is now essential, and I'll come back to tell you exactly why online booking is essential in, in a second. Getting the most from social media, I think many of us do some of social media, some of us play with it more than others, but getting it to actually work for you is, 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 a, is a massive challenge. I know I, I, I spend you, you can sit down and, and get very sidetracked in front of your computer and suddenly half an hour's gone by and you haven't actually done very much. Um, writing compelling, effective and original copy is, is now becoming more important than ever it was. We're all asked to write stuff, bits of paragraph for our website, bits of, bits of stuff on blogs and bits, of, bits and pieces of, of copy. And it's difficult because we're lifestyle businesses, most of us. Most of us, self-catering isn't our day job. Some of us it is, but a lot of us it's not. We're doing something else. So it, it's, it's, it, 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 it's quite a difficult thing to, if you like, attend training to, 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 to do with self-catering. I've been talking about continuous professional development for a while now. Other, other industries have continual professional development, but the tourism industry doesn't seem to have it unless you're maybe part of a big hotel group that has its own in-house training. I've always thought that to get your stars, it would be quite interesting if you had to convince your Visit Scotland grader that you'd actually been to a bit of training, you'd been to a tourism meeting and just taken part in the industry rather than, rather than not. But there doesn't seem a big appetite for that at the minute. What I would like ASSC to perhaps look at doing, and we will be doing this over the next few months, is perhaps setting up training days, maybe north and south, for, for members that would like this, so they could att attend a day and, and just bring themselves up to date on, on, on what's going on. Today would obviously count as, as, as one of those days because it's, it's information packed. We're in the middle of themed years. Food and drink we've done, Active Scotland we've done. We're in the middle of Creative Scotland, hence all the creative stuff earlier on. Natural Scotland's coming up. Natural Scotland is, is a perfect match for, for the, for the self-catering themes. And we're looking forward to Second Homecoming and the busy year of 2014. There it is. Commonwealth Games, Ryder Cup, Bannockburn, another homecoming, and a certain um, referendum at some point, which will make life very interesting. Visit Scotland, of course, doing the big picture stuff for, for, to bring people to Scotland. £7 million advertising campaign on, based on Brave. They launched their new website in spring this year. They're still running the Surprise Yourself. There was a very successful Grab a Glen campaign last year. And generally what they do is, is award winning. And it's you know, by, by, by their peers, by their marketing peers, Visit Scotland stand out and do very well. VisitScotland.com, I do want to have a quick word about. Um, we've been working with Visit Scotland on this site. I know it's been disappointing because it's been a struggle to, to, to at the back end for us businesses to get our data onto, onto the site. We suggested Visit Scotland had an advisory group around this two years ago which they set up and there's been several meetings which we've attended. Um, the launch came at the end of April and the old Discover system which we kind of got to grips with over the years changed to something called New Mind which most of us found was more difficult than the Discover which, which, had, which had stopped. In terms of progress, there have been issues around state aids and fairness, and I will r riddle Graham's talking after this, so I think I will let him explain more or less about that. But basically from December, there will be no online booking on, on Visit Scotland. 
But the book now button is going to link to where you want it to link to. So the book now button on Visit Scotland, if you do online booking, will link to your online booking system or will link to your website or wherever you want it to go. But you will still need to maintain your availability on .com. What's coming soon is a live link to a property management system information. This is something called API. It's a techie word. But API is the stuff that carries your availability and your pricing across common platforms. So if you're a member of Super Control, for instance, Embrace Scotland carries some of that information. Super Control carries it. I think it extends to I Know Scotland, which also carries it. Common platforms and visitscotland.com will be part of that. It will carry your availability from your website all the way through the system. So if somebody asks on .com, am I available? It's not asking, visit Scotland, am I available? It's actually asking, are you available? And it's fed through right back from your website. So it'll be seamless. It's not going to be immediate, unfortunately, but it, it is coming and we are working very closely with Visit Scotland to, um, to make that happen. But the call to action, and that, this is important, that to get the most out of your entry on .com, you will need to have a link to a property management system. Now, obviously, Super Control is one that, one that we deal with. There are going to be a whole raft of supported businesses, and we'll be keeping an eye on that. We, 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 we don't know what the definitive list is yet, but um, we'll be keeping an eye on that. And I think it's, it's good progress. It's a shame it didn't happen. Um, four months ago, which is when it was promised, but that's just where we are. All I would say is some people don't like visitscotland.com, that's fine, but please remember quality assurance, the star system is a completely separate purchase. You can be star graded, and if you don't want to be on .com or any of the Visit Scotland marketing, that's absolutely fine. Just to remember that the things are separate. Um, just a word about strategy. You remember the, 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 the growth to 20, 2015 was going to be from a 4 billion year to a 4 billion industry to a 6 billion industry. Well, we're not getting there. And that's now gone by the board. And we have a new strategy, which has been put together by the Tourism Leadership Group. Here it is. Future our industries in our hands. It's taken about 18 months and there's an action plan to come. ASSC was involved in a bit of putting this together and it will be involved in the action plan that goes with it. It's important, strategy focus is where we're going, you know, where, where we are, where we're pointing, where we're going. And tourism's still one of the six key sectors chosen by the government for growth. So we, we, we're a, an important sector to, to Scotland. Getting it right, I suppose, for, for businesses, focus on quality. I saw the original one of these, it was, about that thick, it was about 160 pages, and there was quality knitted in, quality issues knitted in right the way through. And quality is something that we, we do, but we can, we can do better. Obviously, keeping in touch with visitors is important. We have probably the most repeat visitors of a sector. We have old friends that come back year after year, and it's more important than ever to keep in touch with them. And that's not just a postcard, not just a Christmas card. It has to be a bit more than that these days. So they're warm, they're warm people, they'll probably tell their friends about you if, if you if you remind them or give them special offers to come back. Working with others to improve the offer is 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 important as ever it was. Keep up to date marketing, up to date websites. I was talking about online booking um, a couple of weeks ago in Perth and I did a little exercise on Fife, and I'm sorry if you're from Fife, but this is how it was. I picked the first twenty-eight businesses in Fife on the visitscotland.com, the first 28 that came up. Nine had online booking, six had online calendars, most of which were horrible, horrible calendars. There was one nice calendar. There was one had the front page, was talking about stuff in 2012, come and stay with us. Clicked on availability, 2007 was when the last calendar was updated. So there's a way to go. And all the other businesses didn't have anything. No, am I available? There's no call to action. You've still got to phone up. Um, given the way things are moving, I think that's not acceptable anymore. So if you haven't got online booking, now's, now's a good time to think about it. And I think Wi-Fi too is now essential. If you're not offering it, then um, it can be a deal breaker. People need to be connected, and they'll come to you if you're connected as opposed to down the road who's not. 
Um, Tourism Intelligence Scotland is still, still going ahead. It's had its three year, first three years and it's now moving into a new phase. They produce industry guides for businesses like this. If you go to the Visit Scotland desk at the back, there's a whole family of these and I'm assured they've got piles of them under the desk. So if you think they're running out, just help yourself, please. Take them away, they're great guides. A lot of stuff online. It's free, it's all free for businesses in Scotland to use. This is part of the government's recognition, if you like, that we're one of the six key industries. So please, please sign up, there's the website. And, and if you haven't done it already, only available for us in Scotland. ASSC, our members working together, we're still about 640, which is great. We'd like some more members, so if you've got any friends coming along, please, please ask them to think about joining. And members can help other members. Promote the Embrace site. It drives traffic to the Embrace, it helps everybody. Link back to the Embrace site if you can from your, from, from your, own, from your own websites. And if you're tweeting, please follow Embrace and ASSC tweets, and if we say something interesting, please retweet it to your friends. Like us on Facebook. It's all, it's all part of being a, a, being a membership organization. Our main activity really is marketing our members. We've got the Embrace Scotland website, ASSC blog, guest blogs. We, we tweet, we're on Facebook, and there's the ASSC directory. New additions on the table over there if you haven't found, found one already. One of the biggest expenditures this year for us has been a complete redo of ASSC.co.uk. It was eight years old and creaking at the seams, and at the same time we had to refresh Embrace Scotland. And Matthew, you know a little bit more about this than I do, so if you could just... Yes, sure, I'll, I'll just say a few words. Um, most people, hopefully, will be aware of this transition. Um, we tried to do the communications uh, as completely as possible without overburdening you. So I hope you kind of didn't get fed up with all the emails we were sending out saying this, this was happening and this was coming. Um, what you won't be aware of, I mean, we've had some very nice feedback about particularly the, the ASSC site, the one on the right that has completely changed its kind of look and feel. Um, hopefully you like that. What, what you don't see there is all the stuff that's been going on behind. So when we get onto Jen's bit and we're looking at the finances, you will see the association has made quite a substantial investment this year in, in websites. Um, and it seems to be becoming part of a pattern. I suppose it follows something that most of us are familiar with. You know, if we're not investing something in our website every year, um, it's starting to look a bit tired. And I suspect we will continue doing it, hopefully not the levels we had to this year, the reasons I'll explain in a second. Um, but you know, next year, maybe 18 months time, the Embrace Scotland site will be saying, oh, it's been looking like that for a couple of years now. You know, it's time that was refreshed. And that will take a few thousand pounds. Um, but one of the things that's different about what we've invested in this year is the, the back end to all of this, which has been completely removed from the old technology we're using and into a technology that we hope will make future upgrades and future refreshes cheaper, easier, and take less of your subscription funds to achieve. So that's why it's been a particular year. It's been a particular year of effort on the part of um, the ASCC staff uh, and some of the committee members, including myself, who are involved in, in kind of organizing and managing it, but also you, because we, you know, we had to come out to you and say, look, it's changed. You've got to go and check all your data, all that sort of stuff. So thank you to everyone who's done that. Um, if there's anyone here that hasn't been in and, and uploaded some new photographs and things, then by, by all means, please do that as soon as you get home. Um, one of the big differences in the refresh of embrace was people were saying the little kind of postage stamp images that we had just weren't good enough nowadays people have big screens they even have you know want, want big high resolution pictures on their iPads and things so little postage stamps weren't working now if you haven't upgraded new photographs we're blowing up your little postage stamps to a better size but they probably look rubbish and it's an on and again as always every year at the AGM you know we're preaching to converted you'll have all have done it I'm sure Unfortunately, there are 500 members out there, um, 100 or so, so, who still haven't done it. So we're, we're constantly trying to maintain the relationship between what members want from us in association and what visitors want from our marketing website, Embrace. Um, and it's a tough job, uh, and we welcome any ideas, supports, uh, thoughts that you may have. But that, in a nutshell, is what we've been up to. Um, we spent quite a lot of money this year. Uh, we, we do have things to do next year, but hopefully it won't be, won't be quite as much as it has been in in the last couple of years, should we say. That's us, Dave. Thank you, Matthew. Just uh, on our representation, we, we, we talked to Visit Scotland. We're on the UK and Ireland Marketing Group, Overseas Marketing Group. We're on the Quality Assurance Overseeing Committee. That meets quarterly, and it, it drives where the star 
the, the, the star scheme goes. Obviously, a digital project industry group I've spoken about, and the Tourism Intelligence Scotland Advisory Group, and we are an active member of the new Scottish Tourism Alliance, which is, the, which is a reformed Scottish Tourism Forum. This year, we've been a partner with an outfit called Go, Go Rural. Go Rural is a development of agritourism, and it's initially it was a pilot project to, if you like, knit together uh, rural businesses that visitors would go to within 90 minutes, 90 miles of Edinburgh. Um, there was a special offer for our members to join it, and it's quite interesting. It's more than just you're buying more than an entry on a website. You're buying. You've got to be active with it. You've, it's no good just letting it sit there, like, like I think I've done a bit. Um, the people getting the most out of it are actually going in and putting in offers and putting in itineraries, and it, it's, it's more about people. So it, it's quite an interesting development. We'll keep an eye on it, and we're, we're delighted to be a partner with, it, with them at the moment. Um, the other thing we're looking at carefully is wind farms. Now, I, as an association, we have to take a very level head about wind farms, and we are looking at the relationship between wind farms and landscape and tourism, never mind if they don't work or do work or, 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 or all, all the other issues about them. We attended a, a seminar um, at the end of September and we are calling for more research to be done very quickly because the, we feel things may be getting to a tipping point in terms of the number of turbines in the landscape. Um, that's kind of our position at the moment is calling for more research but we're keeping keeping a close eye on, on, on what's going on there. These are our friends. We talk to many people throughout the year. Um, a selection of, of logos for you and many more. Just benefits of the association, just to give you a quick reminder. We're still, and confirmed yesterday, the self-catering pilot for quality assurance is still continuing. It will continue for another year. So you're allowed visits every two years and you can claim a 30% discount. Um, our members seem, seem to like it and it seems to be working. The reason it's not tied in as, as, a, as a fully fledged agreement is that there are various issues around how you communicate with, how Visit Scotland communicates with businesses in years they don't get a visit and various other things. But it's, it's very positive and it's a good move forward and it's, it's helpful for members. Obviously insurance and discounted supplies, we've got insurers behind the curtain there today. Um, guidance sheets. Enhanced marketing opportunities on Embrace. You can just go on and Embrace, but you can also do last minute. You can become a featured property. You can become a, what's, what's the phrase? Signposted property, thank you. So there's, there's, there's more opportunities there. And of course, there's the popular forum on the, on, on the, the new forum on the, on, on the web. Um, just how we communicate, we do three newsletters. You're familiar with one, Member News. But we do a standard that goes off to um, the industry every now and again. And we do a monthly newsletter to all our contacts, potential visitors, telling them about ASSC and about Embrace. So that's driving traffic to the ASSC Embrace website. We tweet. We, we, we were a bit two-faced. We do ASSC News and ASSC Scotland, which is the trade side, Facebook and Twitter. Sorry, Facebook and Twitter, yes. And Embrace Scotland and Embrace Scotland. Um, again, Facebook and Twitter on the visitor side. Just a quick word about our brand values, self-catering, quality choice, independence, authentic freedom. I think very much still what people want to do, authentic experience is still very important. And if you're talking about self-catering or writing about self-catering, these are great words to stick into your copy, um, just to keep, keep the brand. 2013, working together better. There's still good prospects for self-catering. Still difficult economic circumstances, incomes are still being squeezed, although things I think are looking a little better than they were this time last year. It's important to adopt what the best tourism businesses do. If you go to tourism events, you usually pick up something that you take away with you and try it out at home. Keep in touch with your visitors, obviously we've said that already, and build on the brand. I'd like to thank our committee for all the hard work they do. We have a good strong group across the industry in charge. We have people from all over Scotland on our committee. Our team tackle the day-to-day -day running of the ASSC, Secretary Jennifer Moffat, assisted by Eleanor McBain, who's taking notes over there, and uh, marketing assistant Emma Gibb, who do a great job in assuring the smooth running of the association. Emma's just disappeared off and had her first baby, which is, is great, and she will be back with us fairly soon when she comes back from maternity leave. Um, Lynn, 
Lynn Pitt, our, marketing, our original marketing assistant, is stepping back in, 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 to, in to fill in, fill in the work until that happens. So I wish all members of success for 2012.